Greetings all. Welcome to the channel and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. The Pocket V10 is an intriguing handheld gaming device and reviewers have been singing its praises. But how do you set up and operate this unit for the best experience? I have five quick tips that most reviewers highlighted. Before we get to that, please note though that the facts I have are based off of research and the feedback provided by some of the top hands-on reviewers and not a hands-on experience I've had myself. I have the source videos linked in the description if you want more detail. You should definitely check them out and give these creators some love as they truly deserve it. Also, remember to like, subscribe and share if you found some value from the video as it truly helps the channel out. Before we get to the tips, here is a breakdown of the specifications and systems compatibility of the V10. I'm not going to go too in depth here as that is not really the point of this video and there are so many other devices with the same internals that have already been tested and will have the same performance. As an example, you can check out my video on the R36S, which I will link at the end of this video. I wanted to post the specs though for those viewers who don't know what's in this little unit. You can pause the screen if you want to look over it at your own pace. With that said, here are the top 5 things I found most reviewers mentioned for running your V10 as optimally as possible. Firstly, understand the hotkeys. The PowerKD V10 has a unique hotkey setup due to the firmware which is called ArcOS. Adjust the brightness by holding down the plus button and pressing up or down on the D-pad. For volume control, hold the plus button and press left or right on the D-pad. Save states are managed by pressing the minus button and R1, while loading save states requires the minus button and L1. To toggle fast forward, use the minus button and R2 to turn fast forward on, and the minus button and R2 to turn it off again. These hotkeys will significantly enhance your control over the device and apparently, as some reviewers found, are incorrect in the manual that comes with the unit. So hopefully this helps you. Next up, you will need to fix pixelation issues on 4x3 content. If you notice anything like this, it is because the screen was not really designed to display this kind of content optimally. It was made to run 3x2 content without a hitch. That would mainly be Game Boy related games. Systems like NES and SNES may need adjusting the integer scaling or adding some shaders to look better. Access the RetroArch quick menu by pressing the minus button and X. Navigate to the settings, select video, and then select scaling. Enable integer scaling to improve the visual quality of your game. Just be aware this may slow down the system a bit and it can increase or decrease the black bars around your picture. For a more balanced pixel display performance setting, use shaders. In the RetroArch quick menu, go to Shaders, load Interpolation folder, and select the Sharp Bilinear 2x Prescale option. This will provide a good middle ground for better picture quality without affecting the size of the image too much or slowing down the system. Next, enable Quick Shutdown. These little units are made to carry around with you, and in a public situation, you may get interrupted in the middle of your game and will need to pause it. If you do this in a rush, for example, when getting off public transportation, and you put the unit in your pocket or bag and forget about it, the screen that is on can drain the battery unnecessarily. To counteract this, you can enable quick shutdown in the main menu by selecting enable quick mode. Now when you press the plus button and power, the unit will save your game state and quick shutdown. Then when you long hold the power button later, it will boot and go right back to where you were in your game. Next up, manage storage and your ROMs efficiently. Parky V10 comes preloaded with many, many games. This may make finding the ones you love to play difficult, as in many cases the lists are not in alphabetical order. You might also want to add your own ROMs, as no Nintendo IP games are included. This will for example mean that you will not find anything related to Mario or Legend of Zelda, so you will need to source these yourself. To curate your games on the device, remove the micro SD card, plug it into a computer and delete any unwanted games directly. Alternatively, if this is a bit technical for you, you can simply scroll through them and favorite the games you like by pressing the Y key when you have highlighted the game. Afterwards, you can find it in the favorites menu for easy access. Lastly, you may need to enhance audio and be aware of the brightness the V10 can achieve. The V10's audio can be relatively quiet. It's not terrible according to the reviewers, but it's not premium quality either. The screen brightness is also limited and not ideal for direct sunlight. To maximize audio, consider using external speakers or headphones. You can adjust screen brightness using the before mentioned hotkeys, but keep in mind that the device is best used for shaded areas if you want to go outside. The Parkity V10 with its comfortable design and good build quality is a fantastic choice for retro gaming enthusiasts, particularly those who love GBA games. So if you love that system, this unit is for you.
And at a $40 price tag, it provides much better value than searching for and buying a refurbished Game Boy Advance, for example. As stated, it will also play anything up to PS1 brilliantly. That's if you are not too bothered with having to tinker with settings to get the 4x3 aspect ratio content looking better. It is not however really suited for Dreamcast, N64 or PSP games, due to the fact that the RK3326 is not powerful enough to run these effectively. You will find that there are some low-end games on these systems that can run on the device, but anything demanding like Dead or Alive 2 or Shining Force was basically unplayable in the reviews I saw. Many games on these systems will need an analog stick as well, and although there are workarounds like configuring the D-pad to do the work, it can be quite tedious to implement these. So while the V10 has some quirks, hopefully following these tips will help you get the best performance and enjoyment from your device. That's it for this one though. If you want to check out some other devices that are similar and can also run GBA games fairly well, click on the links on screen now for my video overviews of the R36S and the Ironbernic RG35XX SP. Have a nice day and I'll catch you in the next tech update.